welcome back. This is week three, part one, the exercises that we're going to do from the lecture notes. Uh, this week is about collections. So this first part is actually about collections. So we, we learned about uh, we learned about arrays, dictionaries, lists, queues, stacks, and so on. And so now we're going to demonstrate them in nine examples here. So starting with exercise one, uh, the idea is that we're going to create a simple array. We're going to print out the array. We're going to Look at the array spec, so length of the array, rank, dimensions, and sorting, and so on. So first, let's create a simple console app. So click on that. I'm going to call this uh, W3P1 for part one, exercise one, and give it a home. So let's call this W3P1 exercise one. And of course, check mark for keeping the solution in the same directory, .NET 472, hit create. All right, and this is the brand new project that has been created here. And let's increase the font size to 150% so you guys can see it a bit better. All right, so there we go. Got Stack vein main. Let's start off by creating two methods to support what we want to do here. So before I start into main, I'm going to say private static void. Call it print array specs, and we'll pass in the array. So I'll say int. So we'll just use an array of ints today. My array. So we've got our array there, and we got our array that's passed in, so we'll just print them out. We'll say console.writeline, and we'll say my array specs are, and we'll print start with the length, so console.writeline length is, and we'll do a curly zero, comma, my array dot length. And we'll say console dot right line and we'll say rank is curly zero comma my array dot rank. And then console dot right line and we'll say length of dimension zero is curly zero. We'll say comma my array dot get length of zero. Now let's explain what's going on here. So we know that the length of the array, we're only going to do deal with a 1D array, one dimensional array today, but uh, for multi-dimensional arrays, the next two lines after length actually have some meaning here. So we're saying the length of the array, which is pretty basic, but rank of the array means how many dimensions are there in the array. So is it a 2D array, 3D array, and so on? It's a 1D array, so that's what the result should be. And the length of dimension 0, or basically that first dimension. So we're going to get the length of the first dimension. All right? Because we can have different lengths of arrays for the dimension, so you don't you don't deal with, you don't necessarily have to deal with rectangular arrays like you saw in Java. You can have different lengths for each row in your 2D array, if that makes sense to you. So let's that's uh, that's our first method that we're going to create. Now the second method will be just a simple print array. So we're going to use that to simplify printing to the screen for our array elements. So I'm going to say private static void print array and we'll pass in the same thing. So int my array. All right. And let's uh, start with an int i equals zero. Uh, I'm not going to use a conventional for loop, but I also want to print out the index number. So really, the for int i equals zero i is less than the length is is a proper way to do it, but I want to demonstrate for each, uh, the for each loop here. So we'll say for each, 
we'll say is int num in my array. All right, and we'll do a console dot right line saying x of, and then we'll say curly zero, close the square bracket, equals curly one. And then comma, we'll say i plus plus, comma, num. All right, so what's going on with these two lines of code? So what we're saying here is, we're saying int num in my array. So the way the for each works is that the second argument here, my array, is the array that you want to you want to traverse through. And for every index that we're traversing through, we need to declare a variable to represent that individual index. So num is what it is, it's of type int. So that's the way the for each definition goes. And other languages actually have a very similar approach, maybe just different wording uh, for each of them. And so then what we'll do is we'll do a console write line x of whatever the index is equals the number, right? Now we're embedding our i++. If you recall basic plus uh, plus theory, uh, i++ means that you display the number, then you increment it. If you were to do a plus plus i, you'll actually increment first and then display the number. So just a recap of that theory from a long time ago. All right, so now we have the ability to print things out. Let's actually use these methods in an example. All right, so in main, let's declare a basic array. We'll just say int x equals an array of, let's say, 55, uh, 222, 88, 66, 11. All right, now let's print out the array. First of all, we'll say print array and of x, then we'll say print array specs of x. Now let's sort this array. So let's say array dot sort for x and then print array for x. And let's see what happens here. Oh, and don't forget our console dot rekey. So we have enough here to run this thing. Okay, so let's line it up with what we've done here. So first we did a print array for x, so we printed out the array as is. Okay, so that's how the for, the for each loop worked fine. Then we did a print array specs. So length is five, so five elements. Rank is one, because it's a one dimensional array. The length of dimension zero is five. So we only had one dimension here to deal with, and its length is five. So the length will match up between these two. Then we did a sort, and then we did a print again. So now it sorted the array for us, and we printed it back. So you can see a very basic rudimentary example of how to play with arrays, simple arrays in C sharp here. Now let's move on to the next example. All right, so we did a control shift N because we're going to do another console application. I'm going to call it a W3P1 exercise two and put in the same location and place solution in the same directory, hit create. All right, now this exercise and subsequent exercises after that involve a horoscope. And for time-wise, I'm not going to create separate horoscopes for all the individual uh, signs out there. Instead, I'm just going to create one set of predictions, and you can apply this in your own practice. For And I invite you to, to actually invite to practice this using Gemini, Aries, Taurus, and so on. All right? And so for now, let's just create some simple predictions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print out a random prediction and print out all the predictions. So that's the second exercise's point. So what we'll do is we'll start by saying string predictions equals one we'll set of curlies. And let's start with some awesome predictions here that that will uh, bring a smile to your face. We'll start with you will get hit by lightning. 
today. Alright. Second one is, your dog will eat your homework. The third is, the telephone company will double your bill next week. Next one, you will not pass Java 3. How about VHS will make a comeback? And if you don't know what VHS is, you might want to look it up. Finally, let's say the new Star Wars movie will suck. Alright, good enough. Now, of course, I'm just poking some fun here. None of these are meant to be true. That's my little disclaimer there. Hopefully no one gets angry. Anyway, uh, let's get into our predictions. So, let's create a couple of separate methods outside of main to do what we want it to do. Start with creating a private static void. Call it show predictions. And we'll say string p. All right. And actually, let's make it show prediction. We don't want to mislead anybody. So it's actually show prediction. And then we'll grab a random number. So we'll say random, random equals new random. So we talked about random already in a past exercise. And I just simply did random with closing brackets, but you can actually pass in an argument to the random object to really mix things up. And the argument that you pass in is called a seed. It gives the, it gives the random object an opportunity to choose like a random number as a starting point and using the input seed here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our current time as our randomized seed. So we'll say, and we're going to cast it to an int because that's the argument type it needs. So, and you can see the definition of seed there if you need more information. So you can see, uh, we'll say date time because date time is an actual object for date and time. Dot now will actually be right now dot ticks, the CPU ticks. All right, so we'll really randomize it, providing a seed to help it out. Now, let's get a random number based on the length of this array so that it doesn't exceed the uh, number of the indices in the array. So we'll say int ran equals, and then we'll cast it to an int, and open up a round bracket, and say random dot next double, all right? And then we'll times it by p dot length minus one, all right? So that ensures that the next item that we get will be between zero and n minus one for the length. Now let's just print out a prediction. So we'll say console dot right line, we'll say we predict that and then curly zero and we'll say comma and we'll say p of ran All right so that's our prediction method and we can go ahead and call it inside main so we have here our string predictions there's our main right there so let's go ahead and call it so we'll say show prediction passing in predictions All right, now let's create another method to show all of the predictions. So I'm gonna say, I shall do it just above here. We'll say private static void show all predictions. We'll pass in string p. And we've already 
seen the for each loop. So I'm going to use the for each loop again, but this time for a string. So instead of an int. So we'll say console dot right line. And we'll say all predictions are. And then we'll go ahead and do a for each. string p in sorry we can't use we can't reuse p so string string p r in p and what we'll do is we'll say console dot right line and print out p r Now, if we want to really modify this and show each index in the array, we could actually follow what we did in the last example, uh, but I think I'll leave it like this. Now, let's actually call show all predictions for prediction. And don't forget our console.read key. This is back in our main, so just below our predictions there. All right, so we have enough to run. Let's give it a run see what happens. All right, so the output. So first, we predict that your dog will eat your homework. All predictions are, there we go, all the predictions are printed out. Let's run it a second time. This time, it said, we predict that VHS will make a comeback and still printed out all of them. Let's do it one more time for fun. This time it jumped back to your dog will eat your homework and print out all the different predictions. But you can keep playing with this and seeing how it prints out the different predictions as well. So that's exercise two. Now let's move on to exercise three. Or rather, I'm going to let you guys practice exer exercise three, four, five, and six on your own. And because I think we've done enough examples of basic arrays in here. Uh, with ints and strings that you have enough to work with and we're going to jump on ahead to exercise seven and jump into collections at this point. So I'm going to create a fresh project. All right, again, console app, I'm going to call it W3P1 exercise seven. All right, hit create. And I'm going to reuse the predictions that we used from uh, our exercise, our last exercise that we just did together. So it talks about using horoscopes and I'm going to not do the horoscopes. I'm going to let that be for, pr for practice for you. I'm just going to give you one set of predictions to play with dictionaries. And we're also do lists here as well, as well, just, just for kicks. Uh, but you're going to be able, what you should be able to do is now merge, after this exercise you you'll be able to merge dictionary and list into one item uh, using the what's described in the notes there. And, and go ahead and give it a try for Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and so on. All right, so we have our predictions here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these predictions into a dictionary. So let's learn how to do dictionaries here in C Sharp. So to define a dictionary, we first say dictionary and we'll say string comma string. I'm gonna call it pred equals new dictionary for string string. I'll do an empty dictionary. Now, you can say pred of, we'll say light is equal to, well, that first one is, let's say predictions of zero. All right, then we'll say pred of dog is equal to predictions of one. All right, we're just doing it manually here.
right, so we got all of our predictions in play here. Sorry, actually it's not predict, it's predictions. Autocomplete did not help me out there. All right, so we got all of our predictions in place. Now, let's just retrieve one item and print it to the screen. So we'll say, for example, let's say I wanted to retrieve the dog ate my homework prediction. Then I would say uh, console dot right line four, and I'll say today's prediction is curly zero, and say uh, pred of, let's say dog, all right? Let's put a console dot read key at the bottom. All right, and we'll give it a run. All right, so we're saying today's prediction is your dog will eat your homework. So we're able to we're able to create a dictionary, right? Insert items into the dictionary as we're seeing here, and then retrieve something from the dictionary as well. So now let's continue on. Let's actually print out everything in the dictionary and let's take it further and use a for each loop on how to do that. So the nice thing about for each is that sometimes you have multiple items that you want to deal with at the same time. So we can use a var or a dictionary if we want in our for each loops. So let's say for each var s in pred. Now I want to print out everything. So I'm going to say console dot right line, and I'll say I'll just do curly zero colon curly one, and we're just going to print out the raw keys and values for the dictionary here. So I can just say s dot key comma s dot value. Find it very useful uh, to just grab the key and the value of the prediction, and we're just using a var to do that. So it'll make the conversion itself based on key value pair for us. So let's give it a run and let's see what happens. All right, and you can see here that we have light and you'll get hit by lightning, dog, your dog eat your homework and so on. And you can see we did our key colon value. So you can see what the keys are and the corresponding values are printed out directly. So simple example on predictions using strings and how to retrieve them, all right? And using a for each loop furthermore to be able to do this. Let's simplify things a bit and just play with lists. So simple list, let's create a simple list with a few colors in it and try this again. So I'm gonna deviate from our predictions for a bit. I'll say list, if I wanna declare a list, I'll say list of, I'll make it of type string. I'm gonna call it uh, colors equals new list of string. All right, and let's add some items in here. So we'll say colors dot add for blue. Then we'll say colors dot add for red. We'll say colors dot add for yellow. All right, now let's do a for each loop to print out everything inside our list here. So we'll just do a for each string s in colors. And we'll say console dot right line. We'll say color. And we'll say curly zero. Oops, keep hitting that key for page down. And we'll say s. All right, so we have here our, we're looping through our list for strings, and we're gonna print out each color. All right, so let's give it a run. And you can see now that we have color blue, color red, and color yellow. So we're able to loop through a list, insert items into a list, and retrieve and print items from a list. All right. 
So now let's move on to another exercise. We're going to basically take the predictions above and apply it to a queue. So exercise 8. So let's first start by creating a new project. So Control Shift N, console application again. I'm going to put in the same location, call it W. 3P1 exercise 8 and give it a home. I'm going to reuse the same predictions as before. So again, the exercise outlines that you should use horoscopes. So have like uh, two dimensions here, but I'm going to just do the one dimension and then you can for practice apply it to a second dimension so that you can see how things work. All right. So Let's see here. Now instead we have our predictions as an array of strings. Let's create a queue. So queues are, are useful when you want to have a data, and we have, want to have data elements that are first in, first out. So what we'll do here is I'm going to simplify things and just use a for each loop to basically embed all of the items into a queue. So we'll say queue of type string, is uh, we'll call it pred equals new Q of string. And we'll say for each string called ST in predictions. And we'll just say pred dot NQ for ST. Now we have everything inside our Q. Now let's print them out to the screen. So I'll just print out a few. I'm not going to go through the whole list here. I'll just say string s equals pred dot dq. So I want to dq something, I'll just do that. And let's print it to the console. So we'll say console dot right line. We'll just print out s. Now in fact, let's print out two more. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm not going to retype it two more times. All right, so it'll print out three of our predictions. And let's do a peek. So peek allows you to look at the next item or the, at the top of the queue, essentially, and without, without dequeuing it, without removing it from the list. So let's say s equals pred.peak. We'll say console dot right line for well a little text will say peaked and then plus s. And don't forget our console read key. Alright. So we're enqueuing everything into a queue and queuing everything and then dequeuing a few items, peeking at the next at the top of the list. So let's see what the output looks like. So let's compare it. So we're saying you will get hit by lightning today, your dog will eat your homework, and so on. And then peaked, you will not pass Java 3. So it's sort of it's over here. This is the top of the list. Now, that's a queue. Let's look at how a stack works. Alright, and let's compare and contrast. So remember the order in which things happened here. We're going to create a fresh project and do a stack for it and see what happens there. So this is exercise nine. All right, so we're going to do a new project. I'm going to call it a W3P1 exercise 9. Same home as before. All right. Make sure it's at 150% so you guys can read it. All right, so I'm going to reuse the predictions again. All right, this time we're going to go through the same exercise as exercise eight, but use a stack instead instead for comparison. So I'm going to say stack type string, call it uh, pred equals new stack. 
and we'll do another for each to basically put all the predictions inside the stack. So we'll say for each string st in predictions, and we'll do a pred dot push. So we have push and pop for stack as opposed to nq and dq for for q. So we're gonna do a push for st. So we now have our entire set of predictions inside a stack. Now let's print out a few and see what comes out when we want to remove them, which we use the pop command for. So we'll say string s equals pred.pop. All right, then we'll do a console.writeline for s. I'll do a few more like last time. So I'm just going to copy and paste instead of retyping. And then finally, to end off, we'll do a peak. So we'll say s is equal to pred.peak. Let's see what that looks like. And then do a console.writeline saying peaked. And then curly zero. And we'll say s. All right, and don't forget your console.rekey. All right, so this time around we're using a stack where we pushed everything in from our predictions array into the stack, and now we're going to pop a few, and then we're going to peek and see what that looks like. So let's give it a run. All right, so we're seeing here that here's the list of things that got enqueued, it, it got pushed in an order. But now we're seeing that we're going from the bottom. So Avengers movie will suck, VHS will make a comeback, you will not pass Java 3, and then we peek and say Rogers will double your bill next week. All right, and so that's, so you can see that the stack works in the opposite direction of the queue. The queue was first in, first out the stack is last in first out. So you can see the unique difference. And if you really wanted to be sure, you could actually take this code, push it inside of the last exercise and, and print out both at the same time to really get a meaning for it. All right, so that summarizes our exercises on collections and that finishes exercise or week three, part one. And we'll move on to week three, part two at this point. So what you'll do is you'll open up the lecture video for week three, part two, and then continue on from there. Thank <laughs> you.